Hello, uh, this is the first of three parts of a lesson about hypothesis tests for two proportions. So for part one, it's going to be just how is this two proportions similar to what we did with one proportions recently. And then we're going to work through in a second part, um, multiple choice and short answer questions. And then finally, we're going to do some full on frappy phantom sort of problems. So, all right. So, so far in on previous episodes of AP Statistics, we talked about hypothesis tests. And so when we're talking about a hypothesis test, we want our null hypothesis to always have an equals statement in it. And we want our alternate hypothesis um, to always have some sort of inequality. So in a case of two population proportions, we talked about in a confidence interval, you've got a P1 and a P2. So their most logical assumption for the hypothesis then is going to be for an equation of equality, um, P1 equals P2. So that's going to be how P1 equals P2. And so then it would follow that the difference in these population proportions would be zero. So essentially the, the null hypothesis in a two proportions problem is basically like saying that we think these two proportions are the same. We think these two populations have the same proportion of success. Okay, so we've got this P1 equals P2, or you can write it as a difference like we did with the high, um, confidence intervals last time. Um, and that difference would equal zero, okay? Um, as far as the alternate hypothesis, you could say that the first proportion is greater than the second, that the first proportion is less than the second, or, or that they're not equal to. And so this also would coincide with greater than zero, less than zero, or not equal to zero if you wrote it as a difference. Okay, so on the formula sheet, um, you, um, we have this formula sheet here that we have for AP Statistics. We've got the statistic, the parameters, the standard errors. Remember, in a hypothesis test, the thing that we want to be able to pull out of this is the standardized test statistic. And for proportions, that's going to be a Z because we're going to use the standard normal distribution to help us find probabilities. So we're going to find a Z score for this. And unlike a confidence interval, we're not going to be able to just look this up off the table. We're going to actually have to compute this. Um, this essentially is like the z-score for the statistic that we got, or the z-score for that sample distance. So on your formula sheet on the front side, it says statistic minus parameter divided by standard error of the statistic. So remember, the statistic comes from that first column. I've got it highlighted in yellow there. So that would be p hat 1 minus p hat 2. So I take my sample from the first population. I calculate that p hat value. I take my sample from the second population. I calculate that p hat value. I subtract those two p hat values. That gives me the statistic, the difference in population proportions for this ex example. The parameter is the mean there, which would be p1 minus p2, okay? And then our standard error, um, we have a little bit of a, a tweak here. Okay, um, since we are assuming that P1 is equal to P2, instead of just using P hat 1 and P hat 2 in our sample, um, in our standard error calculation, we're going to use this thing called P hat combined instead, which is sort of a weighted average of the two proportions. Sometimes this is called a pooled proportion. Um, so the idea is this. If I'm thinking about P1 equal P2, I really don't know what either one of those values are. I don't know if they're both equal to 50% or both equal to 80% or both equal to whatever. I just know they're equal, okay? And so um, the idea of if I take my two sample statistics, so if I told you I gave you each um, a bag of chips and each chips each had the same number of red ones and each one of the same proportion of red ones and you get 20% red and your friend gets 30% red and you know both of you started off with the same amount, um, the same proportion, not the same amount, but the same proportion in each bag, then if you got 20 and I got 30 or vice versa, our best guess for the truth is probably 25% in the middle, okay? So um, to do this, you take all your successes and you divide by the sum of your sample sizes. This p hat combined value is what we're going to use for that standard error of a statistic. And we only do this in a hypothesis test where p1 equals p2 is assumed. Okay, so we don't do this for confidence interval. We don't do this for sampling distribution. The only time we do this is in this case of a hypothesis test. Okay, now we got a little bit of an information here. So we got to find this p hat one, or sorry, p hat combined. Um, and then the other thing that's interesting about this is remember that if we're assuming that P1 equals P2, that means that P1 minus P2 equals zero. So that in a parameter spot, you're just going to put zero in there. So what happens with this test statistic is you end up with something that looks like Z equals the difference in these sample proportions. Take a sample, find the proportion, take a sample, find the proportion, subtract. Okay. 
that's the statistic, minus zero, and then divided by um, the, the standard error formula where we've substituted in p hat combined for um, p hat 1 and p hat 2. And I've got it written on this page like the formula sheet shows, but honestly, most of the time they just show it with p hat combined, just sort of substituted in for p hat 1 and p hat 2. It almost always looks just like the other substitution steps. It just has that p hat combined in there. Okay. All right. So again, what is p hat combined? When do I need this? Um, so we're going to use this p hat combined for a two sample z test for a population proportion because we're assuming that p1 equals p2. And so this is the best guess that we have for what the true population proportion would be for both of these groups. Okay. So we will use this to check the normality condition. Okay, which means if I want to know if the um, sampling distribution could be assumed to be approximately normal, I have to check that n times p greater than or equal to 10 and n times 1 minus p greater than or equal to 10. So I'm going to use this p hat combined number in those checks. Okay, so I still use n1 and n2, but I'm going to check this using that p hat combined um, to see if they're bigger than 10 in this case. That's going to tell me that it's plausible that the sampling distribution would be approximately normal. Okay, um, the other place we check that is in that standard error formula. Okay, um, so again, which p am I supposed to use then? I've got all these different checks. Which p do I use for this normality check for this n times p greater than 10 and n times 1 minus p greater than 10? We've checked this all the time, which is sampling distributions. We're talking about confidence intervals, hypothesis tests. Seems like there's a lot of way to check this. So if you know p, p is always the best choice. Okay, so if you are doing a hypothesis test and you have that statement PO, okay, P equals 0.5, P equals 0.7, P equals 0.8, you know what P is. You have this assumption for what that is, that's what you're going to use. Now, in a hypothesis test, um, you, you might have that. You might have that equality. But in a confidence interval, you don't. Like, that's the whole purpose of a confidence interval is to try to find that estimator. So in a confidence interval, you will use your P hat values because that's as good as you can get. Okay, in a hypothesis test, um, you will use the p from the null hypothesis if you've got it, because that's a better guess than what p hat is. But if you have one where p1 equals p2, you're going to use that p hat combined instead. Okay, so the only time we do that p hat combined is if we have this assumption of equality, which we don't have in a confidence interval. We only have that in a hypothesis test. And basically, these both are cards in your little um, flashcards that I gave you the other day in class. Okay. So once you've got that test statistic, remember the idea is that you are going to try to find that z-score, boop, find that test statistic, and then you're going to try to find the p-value. The p-value is the probability of getting a test statistic like ours or more extreme if the null hypothesis is true. So basing that idea that the null hypothesis is true, that that assumption is true, how likely is it to get a test statistic like ours or more extreme in the direction of the test? So if you've got a greater than, you're doing that right tail test, you're talking about Z or more. You're talking about that tail area. Less than, that's going to be a left tail test. Okay, so from negative infinity up to that Z-score, that's that p-value. Remember you have a t uh, not equal to, oh, I have a typo, not equal to, woo not equal to. Oh, that was terrible. I shouldn't have even written on it. Not equal to. There we go. Um, on a not equal to there, um, you, that's a two-sided test. So whatever your test statistic is, you want to go from that to the tail. But then because it's a two-sided test, you're going to take both tails. So you're going to take that tail area and you're just going to double it. So if you end up with a positive z-score, you find this area over on the right and double it. If you end up with a negative z-score, you find this area over on the left and then double it using the same technique you would for that first part. Okay, so the thing about this is it's just like it was yesterday. We are still going to do phantoms. Phantoms is our friend. So you are going to start off with P. You are going to define the parameter. Now, you can define it like we did yesterday with a confidence interval. You can say P1 minus P2 is the true difference in population proportions of, and make sure you write it in context, reference those populations, what they actually are, reference the proportion of what. Or you can define them individually. All right, you can do them individually. Uh, sorry, I had to pause and sneeze there. <laughs> um, and uh, you can say P1 equals and then P2 equals, and, and then you can say what direction you're subtracting them in if you want to. You're going to write down your hypotheses. The first one's always going to be P1 equals P2. Okay, and then you're going to have some inequality for the ha. You're going to check those assumptions and conditions. Remember, with two groups, you're looking for either, it's a random 10% approximately normal, so either random um, samples, 
um, two independent random samples, or you could have random assignment to two um, independent treatments. So you get that a lot with two samples, or sorry, with two groups. Sometimes you're going to have that treatment, that experiment instead for that random assignment. Um, if you are taking random samples and you are sampling without replacement, you have to um, check the 10% condition for both populations. Um, if you are not sampling without replacement, like in an experiment um, where you are working with volunteers, you don't have to check that 10% condition. Um, and then you're going to check those approximately uh, normal sampling distribution check with the n times p and the n times 1 minus p. The catch here is that you are going to check that with p hat combined because we're assuming that p1 equals p2. Okay, so um, remember with two groups, you're kind of like Santa Claus, you're going to make a list, you're going to check it twice. Okay, you're checking for both populations. The name of this is a two sample Z test for a pop difference in population proportion. So you're going to write down that name. Then you're going to use your calculator for the most part to find that test statistic, that Z value, and to obtain the P value. You could do these by hand. I'm going to show you how to do that in um, the third part of this video. Okay, um, you're going to make a decision. Remember, if the p-value is low, less than alpha, you're going to reject that null hypothesis. Okay, you're going to say, I reject the null hypothesis. I am convinced that ha is true. Okay, and if your p-value is big, p-value is not low, you're going to fail to reject the null hypothesis. Remember, that's like saying guilt, not guilty, instead of saying innocent. Okay, I'm going to fail to reject the null hypothesis. I am not convinced that ha is true. So at the end, we're either, we've either we're either convinced of ha or we're not convinced of ha. But we're never, ever, 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 ever going to say except ho, okay? Because we are never, like just like in the uh, jury trial, you're either guilty or not guilty. You're never innocent, okay? So just because we don't have evidence of guilt doesn't mean the person is innocent, okay? So in this, we're either convinced of ha or we're not convinced of ha. But even not being convinced of ha doesn't guarantee that ho is true. And then we're going to state the conclusion um, to our problem in context. All right, so in the next uh, part of this video, we are going to do um, some examples, um, some free, sort of short answers, some sort of multiple choice answers. And then in the third part of this video, we're going to talk about um, free response questions and like how do you set up that phantoms problem all from the beginning. So um, let me know if you have any questions on content and go make sure you go watch those videos with the actual examples of using all of this information.